In the year 1953, the Oceano's ship was built. A smaller cruise ship that was bought and sold all over Europe. Then a Greek company by the name of Epirotiki Lines bought this cruise ship. Epirotiki reconditions this ship in the 70s and throws it in the ocean to start working. It's a 14,000 ton ship and it has a capacity of 550 people. It was pretty much the 70s Titanic, but a little bit smaller. It is true that it was not too small, but compared to modern cruise ship, it was nothing. When we get to the end of the 1980s, this ship is still owned by Epirotiki, but a company by the name of TFC Tours is renting out this ship. TFC Tours takes this ship to South Africa and starts working around the Cape of Good Hope. It usually started from Cape Town, stop at Port Elizabeth, then go to East London and finish off the ride in Durban. And all of this is in South Africa. Around this era, the captain of this ship was Yanis of Ranas. The company was looking to just make money. They would not spend money on the ship itself. Everything is rusting out and rotting out, but the ship continued to work. On August 3rd, 1991, the ship was getting close to East London. It stops in East London to fill up the passengers for Durban. At this time, there was very heavy winds. Different captains know that this part of the ocean, the waters can get very crazy and it could get out of control quickly. And that is why they take it easy and not start the journey. But it seems like Captain Yanis was not patient and before the weather got better, he decided to start the journey. There's 571 passengers inside this thing and the ocean is not looking too pretty. It doesn't take much time before the ship starts shaking and it was so bad that inside nothing was balanced and a lot of people were sitting down. All this shaking caused the part of the engine room to puncture and water enters it. And you could say it was because of lack of maintenance and it was a rotting part that cracked open. The water in the engine room causes the engines to shut off and basically drown out the entire room. The only people that are doing their job correctly on this ship is the musician and their only goal was to keep the customers happy. They continued to work even though the ship was not in a good situation and then all of a sudden the electricity goes out. When Captain Yanis realizes what's going on, he tells the control room to get back to shore. But they tell him, we don't have any power to move this thing. Everywhere in the ship, the people were sitting down because they couldn't do anything else. But even in the darkness, the musicians kept their spirit up and started to play music. The only thing that kept the passengers happy were the musician and if they were not here, you could say they would have been very terrified. When the captains and workers of the ship realized that this thing is not going anywhere, they got into a few lifeboats and escaped. They were so selfish that they got into a few lifeboats and they were basically left half empty and the people are sitting inside a drowning ship waiting for an answer. Hours has gone by and the people are waiting for a captain, a worker, to tell them what's going on and what to do, but nobody shows up. In this situation, the only people that were a little familiar with the ship were the musicians and that's because they've been there for a long time. They realize that nobody's there to tell them what to do. The main musician by the name of Mose feels responsible to help the people out 
and fill the lifeboats with the passengers of the ship. Until 6 a.m., they successfully got hundreds of people out of there. There's no more time because the bottom layer of the ship has completely drowned and the ship is tilting sideways. Since the workers in the beginning took the lifeboats half empty, all the lifeboats were used and 220 people are still waiting on a drowning ship. When the guitar player realized that there's no hope, he decided to contact the nearby ships. And after all this trying, the South African army gets the message. And after four hours, around 10 a.m., they arrive to the sinking ship. They save 20 people after 20 people and drop them off about five kilometers to the shore. After three hours, 220 people plus the musicians were saved. The last people that ride the helicopter realize that the ship is done and is sinking. And that means if the guitar player didn't send the message, everybody would be doomed. The afternoon of that day, there was no more signs of this ship. And just like the Titanic, this thing lifts up and go straight into the water. After this situation, the musicians turned into heroes. After all this happened, and they asked the workers and the captain of the ship what happened, Yanis says, I told everybody to escape with the lifeboat. I don't know if they got the message or not. And I don't know how, but in the court of law, he was found not guilty for what he did. And even Eperotiki, the owners of the ship, had his back. And he was not at fault. And it was blamed on the passengers themselves. But after everyone heard this story, the musicians were known as the heroes. And if they were not there, everybody would be doomed. And it's good to know, the musicians didn't know anything about running a ship. And after hearing this story, the people of the world called this guy a weasel. What do you guys think?